Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Michaels.com. Today we're going to work on the Texture Crochet Cowl. We have two pictures but they're both the same cowl. One's done in Karen Sprinkle Cakes and the other one is done in Karen Tea Cakes. Both are exactly the same and you'll need a 10 millimeter size and crochet hook in order to play. It also comes with a free diagram and we're going to review that next in order to play. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So this cowl only needs one ball. So whether you choose to do the Karen sprinkle cakes on the one side or the Karen tea cakes on the other you'll have the exact same cowl. So let's flip this up and there's the colors that we're looking at today. You can see that you can have some really fun colors and you can see what colors you'll get involved in in your entire cowl. Make sure that you remember that the colors that you see are not tied together but it's actually dyeing technique and it abruptly changes from one to the other. So these are the Karen Sprinkle and Tea Cakes. So here is a smaller reduced pattern of what we're going to be working on today and it is the crochet texture cowl. So we're gonna start off with our chaining of 56 and we're gonna go all the way around and then join it back up and then we start the next one. So in between these puff stitches there's always gonna be five single crochets that you see. So it doesn't matter which one you're on, on the, in the rows, it's always gonna be five. So the only thing that changes is the location of the puff stitches. So for three in a row, just like you see, so for three rows, you'll see that the puff stitches lines over top of each other and on the fourth row we just switch spots and go over. One thing that you'll have to pay attention to is that you'll see that you'll have a single crochet over this one, single crochet over this one, but do you notice that the puff stitch is over this one here? See this one and this one are not included in that. So you have to watch for that. That's where I made a mistake during my prep tutorial. So what we have today is that we have coming across and then we have to skip one there as well and do our puff stitches as we begin. So once you get these laid out you'll just see that it works out pretty good. Pretty good. It's always the first one of the puff stitches that you have to watch out for in order to skip the appropriate stitches and we'll cover that later on in today's tutorial as well. So it's actually really quite an easy pattern. Let me show you my little sample that I've been working on and then you can get going from there. So here's my sample that I'm working on and we did our chaining of 56 and we went all the way around and then we started our puff stitches and they line up over top and there's always going to be five single crochets to separate them before you hit it again. So once we get to row number four the switches places and therefore you'll see that it looks like it's awesome right. So it's offset for three more rows and then it comes back to where it was for the next three rows and then it shifts over once again. So you'll see that it's actually really quite awesome and um, it's really really kind of neat. If you would like to improvise on this pattern you can also keep the puff stitches going straight up if you don't want to offset them. You won't run out of yarn because it's the same amount of yarn if you want to do that. So here on camera what we have is the Karen, uh, Karen sprinkle cakes and this is the birthday cake flavor as you can see the flecks of the color are very quite colorful and for myself I don't want to waste this yarn and I'm going to finish this for myself for my winter uh, attire this winter. Okay so enough chitter chatter let's get at her. We're going to create a slip knot. So let's begin and this is a classified as an easy pattern. It's not beginners but it is easy if you just follow along. So we have our slip knot on the hook and I'm going to show you a quick technique as well and I want you to only chain 10 out of the 56. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And what I want you to do is pull the hook off the loop and I want you to insert the hook into the first stitch in the back side of the chain where we started and then put that other one back on. So now what you can just do is that you can continue to chain. So we have 10 done now so we can do 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. And then you can go all the way to 56 and by doing this you're keeping the chain from tangling on itself and that's a really neat way to go. So please go all the way to 56 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. So now I have my 56 on. So what I'm gonna do now, now that I have 56, I am going to then pull the loop through. So just wrap the loop and pull through that one and through the beginning one right, right there and then this uh, loop will here will not be all twisted up. So it's a neat way to do it. So we're now going to move up to row number one. 
So remember what I said, everything is in groups of five when it comes to the single crochet as we start and then we do puff stitches. Here this one here, I want you to pay attention to that because I get confused when I go all the way around on where the beginning is because it blends so well. So leave that out there so that you can see when you've gone all the way around. So you're going to start up and you're gonna chain up one and you're going to single crochet in the same one that you did the join. So you're going to single crochet into the chain. So one and then do the next chain for two and then the next chain for three, the next chain for four, and the next chain for five. So there is your five single crochet in a row. So now what I want you to do is that I want you to skip the next set here and go to the second one over and I want you to puff stitch. Now the puff stitch is not the popcorn and it's not like uh, three together or anything like that. It's a puff stitch. So you're gonna wrap the hook first and then you're gonna go to the second one over and go in and pull through. And now you've got three loops on the hook. So this is a puff stitch making up, making up three of these. So you're gonna wrap the hook again going into the exact same spot and then going in, pull through and hold it. So now you have five loops on the hook. So then you wrap one more time and going into the same one and pull through and now that's it. So you now have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops on your hook. I want you to wrap this yarn and pull through everything but the final one. So just pull through all of the ones right in front of the final one but don't, not all the way through. And you may have to wiggle and get used to this as you go and once you get more yarn onto your hook or into your hands it's easier to ma manipulate that as well. So now you have two loops, pull through the final two. That is a puff stitch and we'll review this a few more times. So the puff stitch, there's two into the same uh, stitch. So you have to chain one first and then going in into the same one and do another puff. So wrap the hook going into the same one, pull through. Then wrap the hook again, same one, pull through. And do it one more time. So wrap the hook and going in and pull through. And you now have your seven loops back on there. So pull this yarn all the way through. So wrap it and pull all the way through except for the final one, leave it out and then pull through the final two. So because we're on the starting chain we're gonna skip the next one and we're going to single crochet the next five in a row. So we're just gonna do that. So one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm gonna show it one more time and then I'm gonna have you do the rest of it on your own. So you're gonna skip one and you're gonna puff stitch into the second one over. So wrap the hook and going into the second one over, pull through. Wrap the hook, second one over, pull, which is the same one, pull through and wrap one more time and, and there you have all seven. So wrap the hook, pull through all of it except for the final one and then wrap and pull through final. Now the, the puff stitches are, are separated by a chain and do another puff stitch into the same one. And you will speed up because it's pretty easy and you're gonna pull through everything but the final and then pull through the final and because you're on the starting chain skip one and the second one over begins another group of five in a row. So you put five and then skip the next one and then do this. You're going to notice that the puff stitch is gonna happen on the opposite side of the work. So what I want you to do is repeat the same pattern going all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this round. So now coming up all the way around I'm skipping one and the puff stitch is the final thing going in in the beginning chain in order to get it to go. So remember that it's grouped of two together. So just there's one, chain one and puff again. Now the trick is is that this is your first revolution. You wanna make sure that your project is not twisting in any weird way because then you'll end up with an infinity cowl instead where it has a permanent twist to it. So you get that done and you just gotta look at the project and let me zoom out the camera and just show you what I'm gonna do. And so I wanna lay it all out and I wanna follow the top edge. So follow the top edge around and make sure it stays on the top as you go all the way around. So there it is there and there you go. So once I have confirmed that I want to join it to the very beginning of the one that I had started with right in the very beginning with the slip stitch. Just like that. So just verify one more time that there is no twist to it and then you're gonna begin again the next round. 
So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna move on to round two. I like to work on it so that I'm coming around the outside of the project. I don't like to work across that the project is in front of me. So I like to work like this. So I've just kind of turned it inside out. So we're now gonna begin the next round. So this is round number two. So you chain up one and the first five in a row are all gonna be single crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. And once you have your five done, you immediately jump to the space that's in between the next two puffs and you're gonna puff right into there. So I've already showed you, it's the same stitch. It's just you're going right in between and you do one puff, chain one to separate it and do another puff. So when you do puff stitches, the all the texture ends up on the back side of the project. Therefore, this side here is the good side when you're wearing it. So then what you have to do is that the next five in a row are going to be single crochet. The first one is down right beside the puff. And just count it out. There's gonna be five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Just like that. So then you can see that the next one puffs are in the way which is what you want. So then you're gonna puff into that one again right into the space between them. Chain one to separate the two puffs. And finish it off and then you begin again. So the next five in a row, the first one's right down beside the puff and then it's gonna be five in a row. And I want you to do that all the way around. So this is gonna be two, three, four, and five. And then you do your puff again. So on the other side of this work is all the beautiful texture happening on the other side. So continue that all the way around for round number two. I'll see you at the end of round number two. So I'm now coming all the way around number two. Now what I was doing when I was doing my sample, I kept screwing up and going further because it looks like it blends really well. So the only time it doesn't blend well is if it changes the color and you're shifting up. So it, so it becomes very obvious, right? So what I'm using is this is my marker that is the beginning tail to show me that I've gone all the way around. So I end with the puff stitch just like you had seen before and then I just join it to the very beginning with the slip stitch just like so. So that was round number two. So then we start round number three. So chain up one and the first five in a row again are just single crochets. So there's two, three, four, and five. And you really technically probably don't even need to count it at this point because it's obvious. And then you just puff into the next beginning of the next puff. So what I want you to do is go around again what you already know and then I'm gonna meet you back here and we're gonna change the location. The puffs are gonna switch over and slide over a little bit um, to the one side and then there are gonna be three rows of that and then we just shift it back from that point. So what I want you to do is just continue to do this and then I will meet you on the next round where I'll show you how to do that shift over. So I'm coming up all the way to the end of round number three. Again, this marker is showing me. I actually kind of went a little bit further because I wasn't supposed to and then I saw that and I thought, oh yeah, I gotta stop. So now I'm gonna uh, now join it to the very beginning and now we're going to shift over. So let's go back to the diagram. Let's see what we're gonna be doing now because we have to change the locations of where the puff is just to offset it. Let's bring on that diagram now. So in the diagram right now we've finished round number three and so you can see that the puff stitches are gonna move over. So this time when we chain up one, the first two are going to be single crochet. We skip the next one. We do our puff situation in the next one. Skip one and then the next five in a row will be single crochets and then we're gonna skip one and do another puff. Skip one and then another five in a row. So once we get this round established is that the next two will just build on exactly what you know and then what we're going to do then is that we're going to change the location then again in number seven as we switch over and then it becomes the very beginning like so and then what's gonna happen is that you'll end up back here at number 10 which is the same as round number one once again. So you see that it just goes up on an angle just like this. So let's uh, begin again and let's uh, continue for round number four. So round number four we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna single crochet only the first two. So one and two. So now we have to shift our puff. So instead of being way over here we're gonna be earlier. So we skip the next one and we puff into the second one over and we do our puff configuration. And then pull through. Chain one and then puff once again. 
into the same one. Your tension really matters for these kind of stitches so pull through. And so now what you're going to do is the next five in a row are going to be it. So we have to skip the next one and then just go to the next five. So one and then this one is going in between the space of the puff two and the next one is the top of the next puff three and then four and five and then we do another puff again. So skip the next one and then we're going to puff into the second one over. Chain one to separate the puffs out and then puff into the same one once again. And then we skip the next one and then the next three is to the top of the puff. Between the puff this is two. The top of the next puff which is three. And the next one four and five and then you do it again. So skip the next one, puff and do all that in the second one over. Skip the next one and then the next five. Please do that all the way around for round number four, uh, round number four. So I'm getting close to coming all the way back around. I can tell by the tail where I am. So I've just done a puff and I'm skipping one. So there's only gonna be three left. So one and then I go into the space two that's between the puffs and then the top of the puff is three and then that's it. So then I join it. So we have to make sure that whatever we do here is that there's three single crochets here but there was also two here before the puff which gives you your total of five. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do now the rounds number five and six exactly the same way. So you're gonna chain up one, two and uh, one single crochet in the first two and then puff and then do your five and then puff. So you're gonna keep these puffs building on top of each other and I want you to do that and then I'm gonna come back on round number seven and show you how to shift it one more time to get get closer here. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna bring back my other sample that I've been working on because I'm actually at that height there and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna be able to shift it. So you can see that the shift is going up on an angle just like this. So let's uh, continue along. So get that done. Rounds uh, five and six the same as what you already know and just make sure that you keep these puffs on top of each other and then I'll see you back here in just a moment. So hopefully you've got rounds number five and six already done and now we're gonna start with number seven and you'll see that the puffs start right away and then there's five and then puff and then etc. and you do the three rows like that just like there and then we switch back to what you already know back in number one which you can reverse the video for that if you need to review that one once again. So now we're gonna start up round number seven. You'll see that there's a really big loop here so you pull up a large loop and then you put your um, puff in chain one and then puff in right into the beginning and then the next five in a row and then puffs again. So let's begin round number seven. So let's begin round number seven. So I'm at the point where I'm about to start. So I'm going to pull up on a chain. So just pull up, up like this, just an extra little bit longer than normal and in the same one that you've done the join, I want you to do your puff. So you already know how to do your puffs at this point and then get that in chain one and then puff once again in the same one that you did the join. So it's the exact same stitch. And now the next five in a row are each going to be uh, one single crochet. So don't forget you have to skip the next one. So go to the second one over and do one and two. This one's between the puff. Three is on top of the uh, last puff available. Four and five. And then you do the puff again. So skip one and go to the second one over and do your puffs. And then what you have to just do then is skip one and then next one over is that you're gonna do five in a row. So one Go in between the space for two, top of the last one that you see here and then four and five and then you skip one and do another puff. So that's what I want you to do here and you notice that the puffs are then going to be then in sequence and if you turn it over like so you can see that your puffs are now gonna grow up even on a more angle that you see happening here. So what I want you to do is finish this round and we'll just review one more time and then we'll be good to go. So as I get back around I've got the puff stitch in here. This is the one that I started with. So there's gonna be five in a row. So I'm just gonna do the final two. So one and two and then it's like skip one and there is the top of the puff. So what we want to do is that we want to join it to the top of the puff here. 
but we have to because of where we are we have to start in the next round. So every time you're in this situation you have to start the next round between the puffs. So in order to start the next round which is round number eight you're just gonna slip stitch over and now you're in between the puffs just like this. So then you pull up a large loop and then you begin to puff once again. So you have three rounds of doing exactly where the puff is right now and then you switch back to where you were back on row number one or round number one and two just like where those puffs were originally were and then you continue again. So because this is not the starting of time of moving the puff over we just immediately come to the next one and we do the next five. So one, two, three, four, and five. So you only worry about skipping over anything when you're moving the puff from one section to another just like you see here. So then here's the next puff you go in between and so on. So what I want you to do this is all that it is and you keep switching every three rounds to be able to uh, move these puffs over to give you the textured look and it turns out to be quite amazing and I think it would be a great accessory for your winter decor or even fall and etc. And I wanna finish this one for myself as well because I just love the color and continuing along. So let's turn it around and see what we are, we got ourselves into. So you can see once I pull this out is that you can see that the puffs have been moving over as you see here and it's been quite awesome and I think that you'll really truly enjoy this project so you can see it's gone up on an angle just like it shows in the diagram and more. So that's it for now and you can just finish your cowl and you're good to go. So on behalf of michaels.com as well as the crochet crowd have a great day. And don't forget to post your photos on Facebook. We would love to see your creativity. Have a good one. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.